Thanks for checking in with this week's installment of Weather Extra. We're going to talk about one of the biggies when it comes to seasonal forecasts. What's next winter going to be like? Which is never really an exact science. But when it comes to long-range forecasts looking ahead to a winter, by far the most useful tool is to gauge where we are when looking at El Nino, or in this case, La Nina. And the map behind me is a good place to start that discussion because whether it's an El Nino or a La Nina, what drives that more than anything else is what's happening in the sea surface temperatures. And right now you don't see much going on here. This is a look at the Pacific and the sea surface temperatures, but not just the sea surface temperatures themselves. This map shows you how far above or below average the temperatures are. And when we look at El Nino or La Nina, the area we're concerned about is the equatorial Pacific right here. How far above average the temperatures are, that would allow us to gauge El Nino. How far below average the temperatures are, that would allow us to gauge La Nina. Let me show you what we looked like last winter when we were in the grips of a fairly intense La Nina at times. La Nina is where you have cooler than average sea sur surface temperatures along the equator. And La Nina tends to change the global atmospheric weather patterns in such a way that it typically brings us somewhat drier than average winters. And last winter certainly did that. And La Nina rung true in terms of maybe the exaggerated possibility for a La Nina to give us a drier than average winter, because we certainly had one. Now, that's what we looked like at the height of last year's La Nina. And this is, goes back to November of 2020, and that gave us a good gauge. Hey, if La Nina holds true this year, it doesn't have to go this way, but we could have a drier than average winter, and sure enough, that's the way it worked out. Here's where we look like now again in July. We're really not seeing much of a clear pattern here on the surface. However, we are seeing very strong indications just below the surface that the conditions are coming together for another La Nina to develop going into this winter. And to do that, we're gonna change our perspective now. We've kind of flipped things on their side. There's North America over there. Think of this as the surface of the ocean. You see the black line right there. And here's the ocean at depth. Red areas show you where the water column is warmer than average. Blue areas show you where it's cooler than average. And that's what matters right there. Because we're already seeing a clear indication of these um, ocean water temperatures below the surface are already starting to cool to the point where that's kind of the driving mechanism to help push this towards La Nina conditions. And when you put that into relation with the long range forecasts that show us what's the likelihood that the Pacific Ocean is gonna continue down this path, this doesn't paint a very pretty picture in terms of our hope that maybe we could avoid another La Nina winter. You can see the dotted line there going across right there in the middle. That would show you average sea surface temperatures. Here's what we've been doing. Here's where we are. And that's the forecast to take us into November, December, and January, meaning below average sea surface temperatures for that portion of the equatorial Pacific that are most important when it comes to determining if we are in a La Nina and if the sea surface temperatures are in such a range of temperatures that they're going to drive the global weather patterns one way or the other, in this case, La Nina. Now, while it does look likely at this point that we're heading for another La Nina winter, when you look at a forecast like that, the confidence level on this is 60 to 70 percent on the yes, we're likely heading into another La Nina winter. And even though that sounds concerning, and it should, it is by no means a guarantee. The thing about El Nino or La Nina is they are very helpful tools when it comes to making seasonal predictions for how's this winter going to go. But they are by no means a guarantee. If we look at what the odds are, take California as a whole and take all of the La Ninas. We could break it up into weak La Nina, moderate La Nina, strong La Nina. It's too early to say whether this next coming winter is gonna be weak, moderate, or strong. Even if there is a high degree of confidence, we are heading into another La Nina. But if you just look at all of them as a whole, how do we typically fare in California? Well, La Nina tends to impact Southern California in a more significant way. In other words, when we have a La Nina, it is worse news in terms of having a drier winter in Southern California than it is in Northern California. 
Now, having said that, it still doesn't mean we get off easy. Look at the odds here. That 91% there for the Bay Area, but of course you want to take a look up at Northern California as a whole. We've got 96% for the Northern Sacramento Valley and about 100% of average for the watersheds of the northernmost Sierra. That would mean, you know, you get basically an average winter. Here in the Bay Area, we typically come in below average. That's the takeaway from this is there's a growing degree of confidence, unfortunately. It looks like another La Nina winter. And yes, odds favor us having a below average rainfall year, but that's really centered far more in Southern California than it is in Northern California, even though in Northern California, yes, the odds still do lean towards coming in a bit below average. It's not an exact forecast. It's just an early look ahead. And considering how significant the drought is this year and how concerning the remainder of fire season looks for the rest of this year, the news we did not want to hear is that we're heading into another La Nina winter. However, since that's the way the news is looking, it's worth starting to talk about it now and to start thinking in those terms for any preparations that are within our means to start making as we look ahead to this next winter when it comes to landscape and water management, et cetera, et cetera. We'll take this one winter storm at a time as we head into the season. Keep your fingers crossed at this point. That might be as good as anything. Thanks for checking in on this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagen will be back with you next week for another take.